Hey, what's happening? It's Andrew Grillos here. This afternoon, I'm going to tie my pool toy hopper for you. Thanks to one of my YouTube followers, I had a request to demonstrate this guy, which is kind of cool. It's one of my older flies. This guy's been around for at least a decade. I guess with that in mind, I don't tie this one that often. I hope you take some good techniques from this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. All right, it's Andrew Grillos here. I'm about to tie my pool toy hopper for you. It's one of my older flies. This guy's been around for about a decade, and I don't tie it all that often for no good reason, because this guy still gets them. As with all my flies, I like to start off by laying down a nice tight thread base. That gives us a good solid foundation to attach all of our other materials to. So now I want my thread back here, just slightly left of center. Let's get that tag end of thread out of there. And kind of my next step that I believe is a bit of a cheat, but it kind of gets it done. I'm going to use a little super glue right in here. Just kind of right on top there, that's enough. Now my next step is, this is my brown layer of foam. I pull this over the top of the fly. And uh, what I want to do is line this guy up so the corners of the point are kind of right in the center of the fly. That little point there makes for a little bit less bulk when I tie this guy in. That looks nice and centered there. Just center it up and press it down. The super glue should secure it. Hold it nice and secure with your left index finger. Try to keep it straight. Don't flip it over like I just did. Alright, so one's kind of two, kind of three wraps, just get snug and more and more snug. Alright, so I'm going to bury the front end of this foam, just under kind of nice tight wraps there. Just try to keep it on top. And now going back towards the bend of the hook, I'm going to bury this foam in there. This will give us a little bit of bulk to wrap our dubbing around. You can kind of get away with a little bit less dubbing instead of using a big old fat dubbing rope. And so that's pretty good right there. Alright, so I'm going to go back to the center point up here. A couple additional wraps. My next step here is I'm going to wax my thread and slightly on my finger. That kind of makes it easier to get a nice tight wrap out of this dubbing. And this is a UV tan ice dub from Hairline. I love this stuff. The ice dub is really nice to work with. It dubs nicely and it's got a good sparkle to it. See that nice tight little rope that I'm able to twist there? I kind of feel like when you're dubbing something less is more. That's nice and thin. What I've got going here, uh, that brown foam twisted a little tiny bit on me, so I'm just going to kind of force it around and straighten it out. With this fly, I want everything aligned kind of along the top center of the hook, and that's a little crooked there, so I'm just going to kind of manipulate it around and kind of work my thread back here and kind of tie it down. I 
I believe that should be nice and secure. My next step here is to dub the rest of that body. A little wax, a little on my finger. Let's get our dubbing out of the package there. This should be enough. Maybe a little bit thick right there, but I think I'll be able to tighten this up and should get it done pretty nicely there. Alright, so I'm just going to twist it and slide it up towards the fly. That's a good way to move your little dubbing rope if it's too low. I think that should wrap in there pretty nicely. Alright. Now I want to wrap this right back to the brown foam. Maybe go slightly over it there. Now I want a little bit more dubbing just to kind of come back towards the midpoint of the fly. I'm going to add a little bit of wax on my thread there. A little tiny bit on my fingers should work. Now we'll twist up another little dubbing rope here. Alright, I'm going to work that dubbing rope up to the fly body there. A couple twists just to tighten it up. That should do the trick. Now I'm going to kind of diagonally advance my thread forward to that midpoint where I already made a few extra wraps. Alright, so that's like five or six wraps in the center there. My next step is to get my tan layer of foam here. Alright, so width-wise this should be kind of similar to the hook gap. That's a measurement that I typically rely on, so this brown layer should be pretty similar to that. My next step is to kind of uh, line up the back end of this little foam strip with the end of the dubbed body that I just did and hold that nice and tight. You don't want this guy to rotate. I think to make this more easy to work with I'm going to cut the end off. Right, that should work there. Just kind of snug it up. Don't go straight to maximum tension otherwise you'll cut right through the foam. And so what I'm going to do here is create my X wraps that give that body the cool segmented look that I kind of use in a lot of my tying. So make one kind of little diagonal wrap going back and one perpendicular wrap. I'm going to do a second perpendicular and just kind of follow the first perpendicular wrap and make another diagonal wrap here. And go right back kind of next to the end of the tan foam. And another perpendicular wrap where I just kind of cross the tan foam there. Now I'm going to finish this little X and finish the next X right there. And maybe for security, one, two, three good wraps right there. I'm going to leave this uh, about that length. We're going to trim that once we're kind of near the end of tying this fly. Alright, so our next step is to line up and pull the brown foam forward. So I just like to kind of manipulate this guy around. I'm going to test it and just check and kind of make sure that's nice and square there. I'm going to rely on a little bit of super glue to keep that nice and straight. So just a little tiny thin bit right on top of the X wraps there. Alright, so I'm going to pull this forward. Just hold it nice and tight on top of that super glue. going here, uh, that brown foam twisted a little tiny bit on me, so I'm just going to kind of force it around and straighten it out. With this fly, I want everything aligned kind of along the top center of the hook, and that's a little crooked there, so I'm just going to kind of manipulate it around and kind of work my thread back here and kind of tie it down. I believe that should be nice and secure. My next step here is to dub the rest of that body little wax, a little on my finger. Let's get our dubbing out of the package there. This should be enough. Maybe a little bit thick right there, but I think I'll be able to tighten this up and should get it done pretty nicely there. Alright, so I'm just going to twist it and slide it up towards the fly. That's a good way to move your little dubbing rope if it's too low. I think that should wrap in there pretty nicely. Alright. Now I want to wrap this right back to the brown foam. 
Maybe go slightly over it there. Now I want a little bit more dubbing just to kind of come back towards the midpoint of the fly. I'm going to add a little bit of wax on my thread there. A little tiny bit on my fingers should work. Now we'll twist up another little dubbing rope here. Alright, I'm going to work that dubbing rope up to the fly body there. A couple twists just to tighten it up. That should do the trick. Now I'm going to kind of diagonally advance my thread forward to that midpoint where I already made a few ex extra wraps. Alright, so that's like five or six wraps in the center there. My next step is to get my tan layer of foam here. Alright, so width-wise this should be kind of similar to the hook gap. That's a measurement that I typically rely on, so this brown layer should be pretty similar to that. My next step is to kind of uh, line up the back end of this little foam strip with the end of the dubbed body that I just did, and hold that nice and tight. You don't want this guy to rotate. I think to make this more easy to work with, I'm going to cut the end off. That should work there. Just kind of snug it up. Don't go straight to maximum tension, otherwise you'll cut right through the foam. And so what I'm going to do here is create my X wraps that give that body the cool segmented look that I kind of use in a lot of my tying. So make one kind of little diagonal wrap going back and one perpendicular wrap. I'm going to do a second perpendicular and just kind of follow the first perpendicular wrap and make another diagonal wrap here. And go right back kind of next to the end of the tan foam. And another perpendicular wrap where I just kind of crossed the tan foam there. Now I'm going to finish this little X and finish the next X right there. And maybe for security, one, two, three good wraps right there. I'm going to leave this uh, about that length. We're going to trim that once we're kind of near the end of tying this fly. Alright, so our next step is to line up and pull the brown foam forward. So I just like to kind of manipulate this guy around. I'm going to test it and just check and kind of make sure that's nice and square there. I'm going to rely on a little bit of super glue to keep that nice and straight. So just a little tiny thin bit right on top of the X-wraps there. Alright, so I'm going to pull this forward. Just hold it nice and tight on top of that super glue. Alright, just had to do a little uh, stop the camera and step out of here and deal with that. Alright, so now you can kind of see where my thread is hanging at. I've got that central tie-in point where I kind of have got a number of wraps kind of securing the center of the fly right there. My next step is to tie in a bit of midge flash. I really like this pearl midge flash for an underwing. It's not too bulky and it adds a good amount of sparkle to the fly. And so I've got about three strands, like three or four. Just snip them out of the bunch. And I like to double these guys over my thread and kind of pinch it between my two index fingers and get my thumb in there. Got kind of a crazy fiber going out there. And you can take those doubled over fibers and flip them right up to the top of the fly, kind of top center. Make it nice and tight, and maybe two wraps in front of it like so. I like to flip these guys over and trim them so they're kind of even with the back of the body, like right in there. That works for me. So the next step is the next layer of our wing, which I've already pre-stacked some elk here. So let me just carefully pull this out of the out of the stacker body there. What you can kind of see is those tips are nice and straight. I'm going to pinch these with my left fingers, like index and thumb, get them out of there and transfer them to my right hand and make sure these are lined up where I want them to go. So I want those tips to be pretty even with the end of my flash, so just drop it on top there and hold it nice and secure with my left fingers. Alright, now I just kind of pinched my flash down there, so that's why I undid that wrap. 
and so uh, kind of one like light tension and then make like a second tighter wrap like so. I'm going to make a third for security there. Now my next step is to grab my super cool uh, Dr. Slick micro point scissors and sneak these guys in under there. I want to cut these butt ends as close to the black tie end point there. Alright, so just slide those little bitty scissors in there and just snip all those butt ends out of the way. Alright, got one, one stray fiber there to cut. Got another little stray one in here. Alright, that looks pretty good to me there. Let me just cut this stray fiber. Get out of there. That works. Alright, so I've got my little elk hair wing on top of there with the sparkle under it. My next step for the wing is to grab a chunk of this tan poly yarn. This stuff's nice and buoyant and it adds a little bit of bulk to the profile of the wing there. I'm gonna hold it right on top with my fingers there and come over it with kind of light tension and go to a pretty heavy tension on that. That's pretty good, like maybe a fourth tight wrap there. Now I like to kind of line these up and kind of roll them together. Sort of like uh, doing dubbing just a bit. Yeah, that'll work. I just want to hold these guys back and cut them a little bit shorter than that elk hair. Just uh, let me get them straight and that should work like so. And kind of just fluff them together. That works pretty well. Let me just work my way in here. Got my big rod rack on the right here. I've got to sneak between the rod rack and the desk. There we go. So now I've got my little poly yarn there that makes the fly have a little bit more bulk. My next step is kind of the third layer of foam here. This guy is about equal with that hook gap. I'm going to cut a notch in it. If I were to just tie this guy like square right on, it would just kind of smash that wing down. So I like to just cut a notch in it that allows the wing to stand taller. There's my notch. Let me just pull that extra piece of foam out of there so you can see the notch. I'm just going to slide this guy so it's kind of tucked in against the poly yarn. And hold it with my left. And I'm going to cut this long tag end out of there. Just because that's going to be in the way. So next step here. Square this up. Make sure it's right on top. That looks good to me. I'm going to take my thread over the tan layer and go back to that same tie-in point where I've got a bunch of stuff attached. Oop, that looks, that just kind of walked out on me there, so that should do the trick. Let me just hold that a little bit more securely. Alright, so there's a one, two, three nice and secure wraps there. You can kind of see that that notch right there allows the wing to stand up and it doesn't just compress it down flat. I got some stray fibers here from the poly yarn. Let me clean them up. Alright, that's nice and clean there. And so at this point, my next step is going to be to tie in the back legs. So I've got some with some super glue drying back here behind me. So what I like to do for these is I tie that little knot there. It's like a knee joint and apply a little tiny bit of super glue. That'll keep the knot from coming untied on you. So my next step here is to take that knee joint and line it up with the back of the fly. Just tie it in on either side of the bug. Let me just hold that guy secure. Right on my side of the fly there. That should work. And now I'm going to work my thread around it and position the leg where I want. That looks pretty good. Nope, I just kind of knocked everything there. Just straighten it back out. That's totally fixable. Kind of make one wrap kind of nice and tight. So a few snug wraps there should hold that leg in place like so. So what I like to do here is, you can see this little front portion of the leg there. Just cut that guy nice and close. It's completely unnecessary to have that. There we go. Get that guy out of there. Now I'm going to tie in another leg. That's uh, kind of got the knee joint just like the other side there. It'll go on your side of the fly. I'm going to cut that like this is the lower portion of the leg. It's a little bit long. That looks good to me right there. 
I'm going to flip this over so I can kind of see the side where I'm tying it in. Alright, so just pinch that guy in there so the knee joint is near the back of the fly. And one wrap kind of just to snug that in. And uh, one nice and firm wrap to hold it pretty securely. Maybe a third wrap for good measure. That should work. I'm going to cut this uh, this front portion of the leg nice and close. Just sneak these micro point scissors in there and take a little snip. Get that out of the way. Alright, so my next step here is uh, I got to get my thread up to the front of the fly. So I got to pull these three layers out of the way and I'm going to create an X wrap sort of a. Uh, actually, yeah, there we go. X wrap up to here. It should just be. That's, that could go a little further up like so. So there's the first part of the X. I'm going to make a perpendicular wrap. And uh, just kind of force my bobbin through there to complete the X. And come forward and follow the previous path on the X. Another perpendicular wrap should hold that secure there. Alright, next step. Let's get that tan layer out of the way. And I'm going to try to secure down this brown layer right there, right on top. So that's three three wraps under kind of moderate to light tension. I'm going to take this tan layer and f hold it forward and flip the hands that I'm using my bobbin with right there. All right, so that's like three wraps, kind of moderate tension, not super tight. If you go super tight, you'll cut right through the foam and lose it. All right, so at this point, I'm going to make one more wrap, not super, super tight, just one more to kind of make everything secure. This is the point that I mentioned earlier, so we're going to cut all these three layers of foam. So I want these guys to be pretty even with the hook point, uh, the hook eye right there. That should work, just cut them, they typically go flying everywhere. Alright, so i got a few more legs to tie in up here, I guess a couple more. Alright, so I'm going to grab this, this one leg from my side and double it over the thread there. And just pinch it in your fingers and slide it up so it's on your side of the fly. Make a second nice tight wrap around it so it's secure. That's a third. I'm going to rotate this guy around and just flip it up so I can see the far side of the fly. Sometimes you get these rubber legs with a little kink. You can kind of see that guy's kinked in the end. So I'm going to cut it off. And now, just like I did, double my thread over, sorry, double my rubber leg over the thread. Just flip that up and tie it in on the side of the fly there. Let me rotate this around so I can see where my thread's going. Alright, so that's nice and secure. There's going to be a fourth wrap and a fifth or so. So those legs are totally secure up on the front of the fly. Here's the tricky part, just sneaking back into my chair. Just got to get around the table and between my rod rack and around the camera without smacking anything so I knock it out of focus. So there we go, just knocking stuff over on the desk, it's all good. Alright, so now I've got to tie in my little pink indicator piece on top. This is a pink McFly lawn. I love McFly lawn and I use it in a lot of my flies, like the hippie stomper, it's the wing and I use this kind of pink color for the indicator on this guy. The ones from Umpqua that are commercially tied have this really cool super bright pink color. I can't find that color in anything similar. I really like that. It's real easy to see. My next step is I'm going to take my little strand of McFly lawn and just take and kind of flip this around and position that right on top. Hold it nice and securely there. Take one wrap over it. Alright, uh, that's like three wraps. I'm going to kind of go pretty firm on that. And sneak a fourth wrap around there. I think that looks pretty good. Get one little fifth wrap to get my thread where I want it. So at this point, I'm going to kind of pull back these front layers of foam and kind of suck my thread up into the bobbin there. And what that kind of does there is once I get this guy positioned, there we go, that should work. So now that the thread's kind of sucked up into the bobbin, I can push that out of the way and maybe make a second wrap. My next step here is to do two or three half hitches and get my large half hitch tool and 
once I get the half hitches in there, it's time to start gluing stuff and make sure this fly doesn't fall apart. So there's, I think, a third half hitch. Maybe that was two. Let's make sure I get three. All right, that looks good. Just gonna snug those half hitches and apply a little tension. And so the final step here is we've got all this extra pink McFly lawn. And so I just like to kind of twist it together like slightly like a little dreadlock or something. And uh, I guess height-wise on this, I like the height of the pink to be kind of even with the top of the wing back there. So I just use a little bit longer scissor and kind of line it up and cut it. That could have been a little bit longer, but that'll still work. You'll get that nice contrasting pink color when you throw the fly out there. So it's not just a tan fly that disappears. All right, and so my next step here is uh, grab my uh, head cement. This is, I think, like flex cement or something, which isn't really the greatest. Uh, I like to thin it out with some acetone. That makes it much thinner, so it penetrates the thread a lot better. Makes for a much more secure, uh, secure hold there. All right, so we have these two spots on the fly where we've tied in a bunch of stuff, so I like to make sure to glue them. I hate when my flies fall apart, so I just kind of like to glue in kind of important, like crucial spots where the legs could get pulled out. So a little glue right there should hold it together. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. Got it. I'm going to go back to where my half hitches are under the fly, right in there. And just spread it out a bit. That should work pretty well. I could use a little bit more on that back tie-in point. That looks good there. Alright, and so that's my pool toy hopper. I hope you guys can take some techniques from this fly to your own tying and get kind of creative with it. Alright, that looks pretty good to me right there. It's slightly twisted, so I'm just going to force this guy around so it's kind of like right on top of the fly. Alright, that looks better to me. That'll fish well. Let me get that leg out of the way there. That looks great. That guy's nice and straight and looks good to me. Got like a little, uh, I captured a little stray piece of elk hair in there. I'm just going to give it a little snip. Oop, missed that. There we go. Got it. I'm just going to try to fluff that indicator up a little bit. Just so it's nice and easy to see. I've got some stray fibers of indicator hanging off there. A little snip should clean them up and that's about it. So that's my pool toy hopper. I hope you guys can take some techniques from this and use them on your own and create this fly and go out there and stick some summertime fish and throw it, you know, hopper season's always super fun, like July, August, whatever, like kind of the heat of the summer. These last little twists, I'm trying to get the fly a little bit more aligned so it's perfectly on top of that hook shank. That looks pretty good to me right there. Alright, that'll work get that out of there. Alright, so I've already already made my half hitches and glued it, so I'm going to cut my thread out and call her good. I got like a little tag end of thread right there. It's kind of ugly. There we go, nice and clean. I'm just going to try to straighten this guy out. A little twist should fix it. Twist it the other way a bit more. There we go. Those twists tend to form because we're applying tension that wants to spin the multiple layers of foam kind of away from me. So you can kind of counter it by just twisting the body as a whole. Don't just get after it and twist the whole thing. Just small adjustments typically will work for you. And so that's my cool toy hopper right there. If you want that nice bright pink indicator, you gotta buy these from uh, your fly shop that sells Umqua flies. So then you can get that crazy bright pink. Otherwise, you can kind of see this nice softer pink out there. And that's my pool toy.